All right, welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, there's been a lot of interest in intermittent fasting, specifically time-restricted eating. Generally speaking, most people perform time-restricted eating by eating in a window between 6 to 10 hours and fasting for the remainder of the time. Some of the things that have happened is in well-designed, randomized control studies, they have shown that time-restricted feeding is no different than simply cutting calories. The question is, is how can you make time-restricted eating more effective? Well, that's exactly the question that a new study wanted to look at published in JAMA Internal Medicine. And what they wanted to figure out was that could you make time-restricted eating more effective by having it correspond to your circadian rhythm, meaning by having you eat earlier in the day going on? And would that translate into better weight loss or better fat loss or any of the other cardiometabolic health factors? And for the control group, they had participants eat for 12 hours or more going on. So this was a 14-week study. It was a parallel arm, meaning control group, and the treatment arm were going at the same time. It was conducted between August 2018 and April 2020. Remember, that is the height of the COVID pandemic, and that actually affected how many participants they were able to get in the study. But participants were average age between 25 to 75 years old. All of them, whether they were controlled or the treatment arm, they all received weight loss treatment advice going on by registered dietitians going on. On the average BMI they had was about 39.6. Average age was about 43 years. And 72% of the participants were female going on. Now, what they wanted to do for all of the participants was the registered dietitian essentially had them eat 500 calories below their daily resting energy expenditure going on. So essentially, they were all in a calorie deficit, both the control arm, which was eating for 12 hours, and the time-restricted eating arm that was going to go early eating going on. And by early, we mean their window was 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. All right, so what are the results? What did they find and what can you take away from this? So what they found was that the early time-restricted eating arm they actually had more weight loss going on. Specifically, they had 2.3 kilograms more than the control arm did. In addition to that, they also had a four-point improvement in their diastolic blood pressure going on. But the part that was really interesting and the part that makes us think that this intervention is worth thinking about, especially in our own daily habits, was the fact that when they looked at things like mood disturbances, fatigue, how energetic they were, how much they were sort of down or feeling depressed. All of those things were better in the folks that practice time-restricted eating, specifically the early version going on. So what is the take-home as far as this goes in terms of what you can apply for yourself? I think the data is starting to come out that circadian rhythm has a lot to do with when we eat. This is why some of the latest studies still continue to support the idea that late at I'm sorry, late eating at night is going to lead to increase in body fat versus eating earlier in the day is optimal. So if you're thinking about fasting, you may want to consider moving that eating window earlier, whether 7 to 3, you know, 8 to 4 going on, 9 to 5, or even 10 to 6, but that's about the limit. A lot of folks who do like 12 to 8 or later when the sun is down, that may not be the optimal. Now, to contrast this study, There's another study that was published by Lou et al. um, around similarly this year as well going on. And that one, what they did was it's a 12-month study, so it's a much longer study going on. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. But interestingly, what they showed was that there were no benefits to adding time-restricted feeding to calorie restriction going on. So the question becomes is, okay, you got one study that's a negative study. But you have this study that we just talked about that's a positive. What's the difference? And this is where looking at the study's methods and evaluating the study is so important. In the study that we talked about with the early eating concept, they actually made sure that the control group ate for 12 or more hours a day. In the other study in the New England Journal of Medicine by Lou and colleagues that did not show a difference, they actually did not impose any kind of timing advice on the control arm. So the control group was eating for approximately 10 hours per day. So therefore, the difference between the treatment group, which was time-restricted eating and early, 
versus the control group was very little going on. And that could translate into finding not a lot of differences. So does this change our basic concept? And the answer is no. If you're thinking about fasting, especially doing fasting every day, such as time-restricted eating, try to make it coincide with your circadian rhythm. As always, if you got a question, drop it in the comments. Let me know what your thoughts are. Or if there's a topic you want me to cover in the upcoming episodes, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time.